I'm John Weisbarth, and I travel across the country with my building partner, tiny house expert, Zach Giffen. And together, we help people build their mini dream homes. On this episode of Tiny House Nation, Zach and I will have to stretch and make every penny count for these young newlyweds. Borrow money from the banks. You know, everyone we love has helped us. It's overwhelming. Can we build Sam and Ken a dream tiny home that won't leave them up the creek without a paddle? I'm just trying to picture what we're going to do with this canoe. And I don't see any skylight here. And try not to blow up the budget while we shoot for the stars with our design. I want to build an observatory. I mean, are we going to pan him? I mean, how are we going to pay for it? Tiny homes are the next big thing. This week we're in Marlboro, Massachusetts, which is about 30 miles west of Boston in what locals would call a, a wicked historical town. It was actually founded in 1660, so yeah, it's been around. Everything about you. I'm on my way to meet Ken and Samantha. The adventurous couple met five years ago. We met through a mutual friend that's a bartender, and Sam came strolling in. I was like, oh my goodness, she's beautiful. <laughs> and then we started chatting and we just hit it off. And here we are. Yes. <laughs> Ken just recently got a new job, basically his dream job, doing social work. And Samantha is a realty sales associate. Last month, they took the leap and got married. And now they're getting ready for another big change, and that's tiny living. They have a super active lifestyle, camping, canoeing. And they're really hoping that by going tiny, they're going to be able to minimize their things and maximize their experiences. We're going tiny for a few major reasons. One is to simplify and to really focus on what we do have and use what we have. You know, we really want to make sure that we can pay off the house soon and be able to take vacations and not, you know, have a huge footprint on the earth. Sam and Ken believe that going tiny is definitely the right move for them, so they are putting all their resources into this new home. We've invested every penny we have into this. We've borrowed money from the banks. We've put all of our wedding money into it. We also got a lot of help from all of our family and friends. It's a little bit like everybody that we know and love has us help build their house. It's really scary and really awesome mixed into one. Zach and our general contractor, Charbel, have been working 30 minutes away in Worcester, Massachusetts for the past three days, laying down the foundation and getting the framing started on a piece of property that Sam and Ken recently purchased in a residential neighborhood. This is yes, your, right here. the framing plan. It's a really simple plan. You know, they're looking for a cottage, which right. can mean so many things. It's kind of like small kitchen, small little bathroom, you know, decent sized bedroom. You know, the one thing I'm not seeing in here is uh, no closets. <laughs> but storage. they got the storage yes. loft. Yeah. So at least they got that going for them. I love it. OK. I love it. Man. Sweet. Excellent. <laughs> While the crew continues framing up the house, I'm heading to meet Sam and Ken at their current home, where they're renting the ground floor of a large house. That's a big canoe. How's it going, guys? Hey, how's it going? How are you? Good, good, good. Come on, on in. Nice. Good to see you guys. Good Welcome to, to our house. Too. Oh, we we'll start right in the kitchen. Yes. Yeah, this is the kitchen. This is our main living area. This is kind of a nice place, you guys. How old is 1880s, it? 1880s, the house was built. Wow. So three, three stories. The top two are, are not rented out, so. How big is the space that you guys occupy? I believe we're living in 1,100 square feet. Okay. It's not giant. It's not giant, but definitely bigger than what we're moving into. Yeah, what are you guys going down to? We're going to 398, so it's pretty much cutting it by a third. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, this is our cat monkey. Okay. A monkey is a huge part of our lives. He's, you know, part of the family. We want to make sure he's comfortable and happy. What's the name of the cat? A monkey. cat named yes. Monkey. Having a pet in a tiny home can be a real challenge because they need room to run and play and, and get wild. You know, on second thought, I think we're going to be just fine. There's a lot of stuff in here. Yes, there is. How much furniture um, do you think is going to come? I really want that couch and a coffee table. And I don't know how those are all going to fit. Luckily, um, I am a master rearranger, yes. so I will make it fit. What do you mean by like, your master rearranger? It's a hobby of mine. When was the last time you moved furniture in here? Maybe like a week ago. I really like to rearrange my furniture. I don't want to get bored with my surroundings. Can I be honest with you? Yeah. When you go tiny, it's kind of a place for everything and everything in its place. 
that's how you make something that's less than 400 square feet work for you. <laughs> I have worries about this as well, Josh. Yeah. Compulsive furniture arranging disorder is a real thing. CFAD for short. I just made that up. But honestly, it's a little bit weird that she moves her furniture around all the time. And I don't know if we're going to be able to do that in a tiny house. So maybe we just found the cure. You're welcome, America. That's a big TV. Who are you guys TV people? Are you outdoorsy people? I would honestly say we're a little bit of everything. We like to, you know, stay home, watch our shows, yeah. and, you know, stargaze. But we also love nature at the same time. So I guess it depends on the weather. You said stargaze? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Ooh, we have such limited time together, just the two of us. That's one of the things that we love to do. That's our That's happy thing. place. Oh, we actually have a telescope. It's right over here. This is actually the perfect tiny house telescope. I like this. How often are you guys stargazing? That's one funny thing is, but one thing that's brought us together the most, we haven't been able to do. So I'm hoping that there's a space at the tiny house where we can stargaze. OK. While I'm getting a sense of what Sam and Ken will need in their tiny home, the crew is moving forward at the build site, adding insulating wrap, pouring the cement foundation for the front porch steps, and installing sheetrock on the interior. As that happens, Zach is busy adding supports for the floor beams underneath the home. Here in Massachusetts, the typical slab foundations aren't normally permitted because of the frost line. So we're going with a crawl space foundation instead, but that's going to give us great access for future repairs on electrical and plumbing, plus great drainage. So it's a win-win. You almost look like you know what you're doing, Buck. I may have done this once before. <laughs> One of these days, you'll have a handle on it. Trust me. Yeah, I'll get keep it. watching the show. I'll figure it out. <laughs> Looks like we will have our work cut out in this room. I mean, <laughs> what is this yeah. room? It is the collection room. Oh, man. Uh, we also have Ken's closet right behind you. It's not too bad. There's not a lot of stuff in there. Where's your closet? <laughs> My closet's in the living room. Obviously, I can't <laughs> believe I didn't think of that. <laughs> there is no closet in the bedroom. There's closet in the spare room and the living room everywhere except the bedroom. There's closet. <laughs> Is this your only closet? There's more shoes and some bags um, in the bedroom. So we had three decently sized dressers full of clothing articles. Yeah. Do you think clothing is going to be your toughest issue? Probably. The only other thing that's on my radar, by any chance, is that your car in the front with a giant red canoe on it? Uh, yeah. That's our canoe. I've got a good sense of this room. Can we see the canoe? Sure. OK. Back at the build site, Zach and the crew have the home's basic structure in place. So they're getting to work, cutting out space for plumbing underneath the kitchen sink, adding electrical, and framing the windows. In this house, the ceiling is so high. And so to draw your eye upward, we've added a square window, turned it on end, and put it in the gable. And that's going to let in all sorts of light, plus give it just great character. Big red? Big red. Big red. Yeah, this is a beast. We get out on the water probably twice a week. Uh, this has to come. It's like a member of the family. It's kind of while we're here, and I'm, I'm getting a real look at, at the place you're living in right now. What is it that you guys are thinking for your house? We want it to have like a classic New England cottage feel okay. and lots of windows. We like a really bright, light space. OK, I'm going to go talk to Zach and tell him all the stuff I learned. Thank you so much. Thank Done. you. Nice. I'll see you guys, OK? See, see you later. Ya. All right. Sam and Ken live in an 1,100 square foot home and are building a 398 square foot tiny home of their dreams. Their new tiny home will have a quaint New England cottage vibe on the outside surrounded by nature, while on the inside, the home will feature a modern aesthetic with bright white walls, clean lines, and a dramatic high-pitched ceiling that, along with plenty of natural light, should give the home an open, airy feeling. Downstairs, the home will showcase a large living area with plenty of seating and an open floor plan, connecting to a full-featured kitchen with full-size appliances and a spacious bathroom with high-end fixtures. The ground floor will also be home to a comfortable, sizable bedroom. Upstairs, the home's high-arching roof line really comes into play, with a multi-purpose loft space that even tall folks can enjoy without hunching over. On a $50,000 budget, Zach and I should be able to give Sam, Ken, and their cat, Monkey, everything they need to live together in a home the family can plan adventures from for years to come. Back at the build site, the crew is working outside, laying down weatherproofing shingles on the roof. And inside, the walls and ceilings are being covered with beautiful raw wood panels. While that's happening, I'm meeting up with Zach to give him the details on what I've learned after meeting with Sam and Ken. Hey, guy. How's it going, man? Good. So I just came from Ken and Sam's, and they've begged, borrowed. They haven't stolen any money, but from friends, from family, 
Uh, they have a bank loan. This is their all-in dream. Okay. These guys have a lot of stuff. They got a big loft. It's going to be a good space up there for storage. Okay. We can do some shelving. But really, yeah. but the stuff that really important to them, I think is stuff that we can get away with kind of storing outside. Like, they have a 16-foot red canoe. <laughs> but that's going to stay outside. They're into stargazing. It's an outdoor thing. If we build, like, a deck, detached from the house so it's not under trees and that's like an area that we can dedicate to that. Is that going to do it? I think that's a total win. I do have another question for you. Have you heard of CFAD before? Because it C seems fad? like, yeah, I think Sam's got a pretty bad I mean, case I feel of it. Like I, I feel like I have, but I'm not quite sure, like. Well, compulsive furniture arranging disorder. You're not, you're not up on your medical journals? So now I'm not a doctor. But I do believe that John is coming down with a case of compulsive co-host disrupting disorder. Either that or he's got way too much free time. I'm going to prescribe to him some work. Does this look like kindergarten to you? I mean, you've got smiley faces on your suspender, so yeah, a little bit like kindergarten. Are you going somewhere with no, this? No, this is serious, actually. Sam has this thing where she compulsively wants to rearrange the furniture. And I don't know how, like, doable that is in the tiny house. Well, I don't think that there's going to be opportunity to rearrange furniture, so it's probably not going to be what she's used to. OK. All right. Well, that's it. I'm going to go check in with Charbel then, too. Yeah. It's day four of the build, and the crew is installing mini-split air conditioning units to keep the living room and bedroom nice and cool. While carpeting is going up in the loft and in the bathroom, tile work has started to go in. While that happens, I'm bringing Sam and Ken to where the home is being built on a piece of property they purchased so they can get an early peek at their new home. We are so excited to see the house. It's real now. Before, it was just something that we were talking about, and now there it is. It's, it's awesome. a real house. What do you guys think? Awesome. Whoa, 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 whoa. Just soak it in, soak it in, soak it in. You're, yeah. you're running right in. Does it look like? It looks a lot bigger than I thought it would. Yeah, it looks a lot bigger than, than we imagined. But I can't really put it together in my head what it's going to look like sure. when all sure. of this is not like this. Yeah. Well, the rain's not helping it's, us out. Yeah, I mean, the tarps, obviously, there's a lot of construction mess. And we probably, hey, hey Zach, I got Sam and Ken. Hey. <laughs> Hi, guys. How are you? Terrific. Very nice to meet you. Nice, nice to meet you, Zach. too. Good news, Zach. Okay. They I like, like the place. I love that window up there. Yeah. That's awesome. I'm just trying to picture ooh, what we're going to do with this canoe. Well, I don't know a whole lot about canoes, but my grandpa was an expert. Okay. And from what I remember, <laughs> it seemed like underneath the tree was where the canoe goes. That might be a problem. It's really tough for us to pick it off the ground. Okay. The issue we're having with the canoe right now is Sam sustained an injury in her shoulder, so it hurts her a lot, and it's awkward movement to pick it up. I have lower back problems, and that's a heavy canoe, you know? It is. It's a big canoe. We use it all the time. This is something we're using twice So if a we week. could find somewhere to, like, store it, uh -huh. that we could also easily access it without, you know, Taking hurting ourselves. OK. Well, I'll definitely try and figure something out. Let's continue to have that conversation, but there is a lot of other stuff to talk about. Come on in, guys. Oh, nice. Wow. Ceilings are so high. This yeah. is wicked. And it's, wow. This makes me feel like I'm in like a three-story house right here. Rule number right. one in tiny house, vertical space. A lot of light in here, a lot of natural light. That, that's rule number two, P.S. This wood's killer, right? When you walk in, you what a that. awesome yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> you like this wall, you're going to like the bedroom. Wow. Awesome. That oh, looks wow. awesome. Are you serious? Where's the closet? This is great. Where's the closet? Yes. <laughs> I was taking you in here to show you this beautiful cedar that we have yeah. on the ceiling and on the back wall. And all you can notice is that there's no closet. One of the things that's really difficult to our house right now is our existing bedroom has no closet. So would love to have some designated something for clothes and shoes and handbags. I mean. Yes, of course. But it okay. won't be as much as you expect. And that's the work that we'll have to do. That's where John comes in. Yeah. And he's very good at it. Yeah. And he's not easy on you, so I hope you're ready. I'm ready. I have been waiting a long time to tell you this. OK, what's that? I mean, you've got a lot of work to do. But don't worry. I got faith in you, buddy. OK, I can get it. Fair enough. I'm whoa, always whoa, the one whoa, sit. Whoa. Less talky, more worky. You're burning daylight here. Well played. <laughs> All that aside. Wow. Right? I mean, this <laughs> seriously looks beautiful. But there's more to show you guys. Show On me. to the next. Yeah. Right this way. Bathroom is actually. Looks really nice. I love it. Feels big. 
It feels big in there. It does I mean, feel big in here. This is the first time that I've ever seen like this tiny little subway tile. Yeah. I don't know, I might be like a little bit biased, but I kind of like cute, small, somebody might even say tiny things. <laughs> I love it. Do you guys want to get into the loft? Yeah. Oh, head up? Yeah, after you. All right. This is huge. This is crazy. I honestly wow. didn't think I could stand up up here. This is really this is cool. Great. But how are we gonna get up here? It's gonna be a ladder. We have a cat that we would like to be able to get up here. That's something that's really important to us. But I mean, cats are climbers. This one's a little older. Okay, let's look at other ways to get the cat into okay. space. Okay. That would be great. I did have cats growing up. I had spider eyes and Amory. Those are the only two cats that we're gonna talk about that Zach had. But yeah, we know cats. No, I also had Guido Luoma and Poncho and Tiger. It's a lot of cats. Do you see this as just storage, or is there more that you need from this? Something that's kind of concerning about this, it's gonna be hard when it's bad weather, say it's really cold out and we want to stargaze to look out that window right there. And I don't see any skylight here. Hey, John, is there something that you forgot to tell me? Because I'm pretty darn sure that I would have remembered if they said skylight. Dude, they they never said skylight. They said stargazing. I don't know why it's skylight now. It's a completely different word. Not my fault. We had thought about, I guess, more outdoor options. That's <laughs> definitely not going to work, because it gets so cold here in the winter. You can't stargaze for more than five minutes outside. OK, to put in a skylight here, is gonna be an expense. A lot of this house is done. It's kind of moving backwards. A huge part of us is stargazing. This is something that we have to make happen. Okay, so, I mean, we can carve some budget out of some other areas by kind of switching around the materials. Well, we're pretty flexible, I think, about the finishing. You know, if we have to have a different floor or a different wall or something yeah. like that. I mean, I'll talk with Charbel about it, but I can't promise anything. It's day five of the build, and the crew is hustling, giving the tiny home interior a fresh coat of bright white paint and framing up the bathroom door, while in the kitchen, custom cabinets are being installed. As that happens, Zach is coming up with a storage solution in the bedroom that should give Sam some much-needed organizational space. So I'm creating a wall-mounted storage solution that's going to have a lot of different size cubbies, plus a hidden compartment where they can store folded clothing but the whole thing's not going to equal the volume that you expect from a closet. So I'm also gonna take advantage of the space underneath their queen size bed. And that space typically goes unused. So I'm gonna create a custom slide out storage nook with drawers that go away when not in use. But it wouldn't be a Zach Giffen special if it didn't have something extra. So it's gonna have a work surface that pulls up over the bed. They can use it as a desk or just a space that they can organize all of their gear before their next adventure. Now that he has a game plan, Zach and the crew have immediately started bringing his creation to life, and I'm headed to see how it will actually work. How you doing, man? Good. What you working on? You know how they're talking about needing a closet? You know, I'm thinking, like, keep it simple, but make it really sufficient. So, cubby storage. I want to actually have one where there's a door that opens up so they can have some, like, hidden storage in the gotcha. back of it. Gotcha. What are you thinking about the canoe? I still have to figure something out for that. OK. Actually, the real issue. I mean, I guess we're putting a skylight in. If we are going to make an adjustment, if I'm going to cut into this roof, like, let's do it for real. Uh, I don't even know what that means. If they, you know, are looking for an observatory, I say we give it to them. This is why I have gray hair. <laughs> I mean, are we going to panhandle? I mean, how are we going to pay for it? That's what I'm worried about. This is why I have gray hair. <laughs> I mean, are we going to panhandle? I mean, how are we going to pay for it? I already talked with Charbel, and we're going to pull some budget out of the finishes that we're going to use on the house. Because listen, we already were planning on like a deck outside for the observatory. So we got the cash from that if we're not going to do that. Yeah. You know, we were going to go with oak floors. Now we went with Pergo. Instead of granite countertops, we're going with the butcher block. Plus, you know, I'm thinking about the cement board siding. You know, replace that with vinyl. Definitely going to free up some cash, so. Okay. If we can find the budget, I love it. Yeah. End of discussion. Cool? Why are you arguing with me? <laughs> Gosh! I gotta go find some hair dye. I'll be back. It's day six of the build, and the crew is installing vinyl siding on the home's exterior in place of the more expensive cement board siding we had originally planned to use. 
while inside, we're outfitting the home with new Pergo flooring and cost-saving butcher block countertops. As that happens, Zach is working out the details for his custom tiny home observatory. When I'm thinking about building an observatory, a circle kind of comes to mind. But considering that I'm trying to keep this cost down, that's a hard thing to frame. So I'm kind of splitting it in the middle, and I'm going to build a hexagon. It's going to extend up from the roof line, and they'll be able to stargaze from their loft, even in cold weather. When they see it and they're expecting a skylight and they actually have a full observatory, it's going to be really special to them. While Zach works out the final touches on his tiny stargazing tower, I'm headed to meet Ken and Sam. Hi, John. Hey, how's it Come going, on guys? In. Because it's time to help them pare down before the big move to go tiny. You guys ready for today? Totally ready. I think I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> My job is to get you guys ready for tiny living. You guys do have hobbies that come with a lot of gear. And you also have a lot of clothes. Yes. So that's not necessarily conducive for tiny living. So we have to adjust. So we'll put a pile of everything that's going to come to the tiny house here. And the stuff, because it's not coming, I said we put it in the hobby room. Understood. Yes. We're getting rid of you. Get rid of some dress shirts. If I have another 80s bachelorette come here, come party. Here, come here. Oh. You already had your bachelorette party. That can go back to the 1980s. How many black pantsuits do you need? Um, I mean, you can keep all the pantsuits, but that just means you don't get to keep other stuff. OK, I'll keep yeah. the ones that are plain so that they can go with everything. Well, she listens. <laughs> yes. I know it looks like I have a lot of clothes, and I do, but it's important for us to have the house be functional for our hobbies. Got to have a sleeping bag. Got to have a tent. Tell us good. We have a travel grill, yeah. so we need the propane tank. We don't want to have to get rid of any of our gear. That's part of the reason that we're going tiny. Skateboarder now? Long time ago. Good. Well, then this can stay right here. OK. While I continue working with Sam and Ken, Zach has already started framing out the home's tiny observatory tower, which will be mounted to the roof. No, I've never built an observatory into a tiny house. Like, this is totally one of a kind. I'm really excited that it's all coming together. Tomorrow, the glass panels will arrive, and they'll be the cherry on the top of this tower. It's going to be awesome. So furniture. Kitchen table. I'd love to bring the couch. Uh, cabinet. Coffee table, it's time to go. Oh, the vanity. Oh, man down. Oh, boy. This is it. So they want all these large pieces of furniture, but I don't think they understand how hard it's going to be to rearrange that once they go tiny because of the spatial constraints in a tiny house. Everything works as a system. It's not like individual pieces of furniture. It all has to work together. So I really need to see if we can shoehorn this stuff into the plan. So on that caveat, you guys did a nice job. High five. We're done with the pair now. Yeah, I'll take some of the high five. It was a, a three-man <laughs> job. Back at the build, Zach is busy welding the metal frame for his hideaway storage bed and attaching the decorative wood finishes. And I'm meeting up with him so he can show me how it works. So this is my bed frame. I frame the entire thing out of steel, and that gives us this entire big cavity where I can fit these boxes that will be on rollers. It's pretty deep, 18 by 18. And then there's kind of a table that kind of covers over. And as you get it out, now you can lift the table up. Oh, you got like an organizing area. It could even be used as a desk. Gotcha. Zach's custom storage bed is incredible, but you don't need a construction wizard to take advantage of unused space in the bedroom. This wild closet bed gives you tons of space to store your clothes while you dream of what to add to your wardrobe next. You won't need a linen closet with this clamshell bed frame. You can lift the mattress up and store everything right underneath. You can have a full bedroom set all in one piece with this clothes dresser bed frame combo, but you still have to fold your clothes. No built-in closets are no problem with some clever furniture choices, even in a tiny space. There is a lot of storage here. It's good. Thanks. I like it. It's day seven of the build, and Zach has figured out a solution for storing and loading the couple's giant canoe. So I brought Big Red to him so he can measure it for the custom hoist he started to build. Look at this. Pulley, wow. pulley. Is this our canoe solution? <laughs> like an engine hoist, but for a canoe. OK. Canoe yeah. hoist. So I'm going to set a post at the end of the driveway, and then the hoist mounts to the post. And I think the best part is the winch actually has a remote control. Oh, I love yeah, that. So it goes on their keychain. And just with the press of a button, 
off of the car. It's super awesome. While Zach gets started digging the post holes for his canoe hoist, I've asked Ken and Sam to meet me. Right this way, guys. I want to show Sam that when it comes to tiny living, there's a place for everything, and everything has a place, especially when it comes to furniture. You know what this is? Tiny living room. Yes. Actually, that's exactly what this is. This is just about the size of what your tiny house living room is with all the furniture that you wanted to bring. And so I want you guys to get in here and rearrange it and set it up in a different manner. Keeping in mind, this is the wall. And what this is really about is about CFAT. What's CFAT? Compulsive furniture arranging disorder. <laughs> I did not know that CFAD was a thing, but now that I do, I feel better because now I have an explanation for my disorder. <laughs> stage two CFAD. Oh, good, I'm only stage two. Well, let's get after it. Let's get this thing changed up. I'm curious to see what you're gonna do with it. Okay, what I think we, we should corner the couch. Okay, what do you wanna do with this? Let's just get it out of the way. Maybe let's have it facing that yeah. way. So like, which way? No, which way I want, want it this go? way. <laughs> careful, your, careful your back. Okay, my back's hurting me already. I'm torn between just flat out laughing out loud watching this and wanting to go in and help, but it's it's not going smooth. Uh oh, I'm gonna wall issue here. Oh, yep, hit the wall again. We have to move this so that we have more room. I don't think there's enough room. There is area. enough room. You have no faith in me. Okay. Watch your foot. You were outside of the hmm. house there for a sec. Wait, you're going to push me out oh, of the God. house. OK. <laughs> Got it. Yeah. Oh. There's no space. I mean, it's like a sardine can. Do you have room? No, no, you're, you're going to hit the wall. It's hard when there is so much stuff there oh. not to almost knock over the cabinet or hit the wall. Looks like we just busted the wall. <laughs> Okay. Done? Done. We're done. There's not a lot of stuff in here, but it feels like a lot, doesn't it, in the, in the confined space? It feels cramped. Yeah, I don't like how it looks. Um, everything's so close to each other. Well, I mean, listen, that's my point. In a tiny house, everything works as a system. If this really was your tiny house, I mean, your front door is, like, right here. Mm -hmm. Opens inward. Boom. True. Your kitchen and open area is actually right back through here. The bathroom is right there. So a lot of the space is already spoken for. I just want you to be aware of that. John has definitely taught us that things are put in a place for a reason and that they should stay there. <laughs> yes. You were right. <laughs> <laughs> I like how reluctantly you said that. I think I'm going to love it so much that I won't even want to change it. <laughs> I don't know if I believe you or sure. not. But yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but if so, that, that's good. Will and we get your me. cell phone number if we need any advice? I'll give you Zach's. Let <laughs> okay, me help great. you with this stuff, all right? <laughs> it's day eight of the build, and the crew is fitting plumbing in the kitchen and adding upscale fixtures to the bathroom shower and sink, while Zach's bedroom storage solution gets a fresh coat of neutral gray paint. And up above, the home's amazing tiny observatory tower is being fitted with special ordered glass panels from Solar Innovations. We also have a plan to give Sam and Ken's cat, Monkey, access to the loft. So we've asked the couple to meet us at the build site and lend a hand with a little DIY project. So Monkey the cat also needs to have access to the loft. So my plan is to have Sam and Ken take pieces of recycled cardboard, cut them to match, and then smash them into layers that are going to form steps that also double as a cat scratcher. We'll get a whole stack of these, and then we'll do all the drilling later. We'll use nice pieces of wood to bookend the cardboard, mount them to the wall, giving Monkey VIP loft access. I was a little nervous, but I think that I did a mean job with those pizza cutter type tools. Nice. Right? Oh, yeah. What I love most about this DIY project is that it's something I built myself for someone I love, Monkey. Nice, guys. That looks really good. Whoa. Now that we've built Monkey a staircase, the crew has been getting some serious work done, staining Zach's custom storage piece and working late into the night to install his underbed hideaway storage frame. But getting it into place is not going to be easy. Zach, no problem. I don't think it's going to swing through. We got to get it up on end, sneak through the cabinets, and then we can get it to the door. This is longer than the door, so. Yeah, that's not going to work at all. 
What do we get? We need to tilt the bed frame to get it through the door, but with the cabinets there, we don't have enough room to do that. And the budget on this house is maxed out. The longer that I keep this crew working to get it figured out, the more money we're gonna need, and I have got to figure this out. Ouch. Yeah, that's not gonna work at all. What do we do? Yeah, we gotta pull these cabinets. All right, let's do it. So we ended up having to take out the lower cabinets. Pull it straight out. Fortunately, there wasn't any plumbing or anything in the way, so crisis averted. At least it's not heavy. Now that we've gotten the bed installed, the crew and I still have to install the custom hideaway storage compartments plus the magic wall unit. But after that, I'm calling it a night. It's day nine of the build, and we have some last minute items to tackle before we hand Sam and Ken the keys to their new tiny home. While some landscaping and shrubbery is being groomed to give the exterior of the home its cottage style charm, the couple's canoe is being fitted with a harness for the custom hoist Zach created. Inside, lights and a ceiling fan are being installed in the bedroom, and lighting fixtures are also going in in the bathroom. And Zach and I are jumping in to place some small decorative touches. Nine days ago, we arrived in Marlboro, Massachusetts to help Sam, Ken, and their cat Monkey make the upstream paddle into tiny living. When we first arrived, Sam and Ken had a mountain of belongings that Sam compulsively rearranged, but we worked to get their possessions to a manageable level, and I even put them through a few rounds of furniture moving in a tiny space. They had some items that were must-haves, but with some ingenuity from Zach and a lot of hard work from our contractor and crew, we were able to do some rearranging of our own with the budget to give them the stargazing observatory they requested, ample storage in the bedroom, and even a one-of-a-kind hoist to help them transport and store their canoe, Big Red. We also made sure that the home would work for every member of the family, including Monkey the Cat, by having them help build some clever scratching post stairs to the loft. On a $50,000 budget, we made use of every single penny to give Sam, Ken, and Monkey a tiny home that should carry them through the rapids for years to come. With that done, it's finally time to welcome all three to the tiny home community. All right, I think it's the next turn. Oh. Nice. Oh, that nice. looks awesome. Oh, oh this is my this goodness. This is awesome. <laughs> Seriously, this yes. is perfect. Seriously, wow. looks look, look at it. Does this feel like what you had in mind when you envisioned your tiny house? This is better than what I was thinking. <laughs> it's amazing. It feels really homey already. Like I really want to go sit on that chair right there. It looks really <laughs> relaxed. I see something going on over here uh -huh. with the canoe. Oh, this whole, this whole thing over oh, here? Oh, yeah, look at Big Red. There she lay. When we first heard about the canoe, I think Zach and I were thinking storage. Then when we started to understand that it was more about actually lifting it, that's when Zach went to the creative well. Yeah, I mean, once I actually picked it up, I sympathize <laughs> sure. with you. It's yeah. not light. Oh, yeah. So this way, you can take it on and off the car easily. And the beauty of it is... It no. comes with a remote control. Way. Yes. Okay. okay. Are you ready? We're ready. ready. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that is awesome. That's amazing. I love it. Who needs this one anymore? <laughs> <laughs> so. As you can see, you just wow. bring it over. There's a little <laughs> handle, or you can just kind of float it like John's doing. That is so cool. Now wow. we just extend, and the whole thing goes down. It's perfect. Unhook our clips, and you guys are ready to go to the lake. We're definitely going to go out canoeing more because of this. That's the whole point, is, that, is to make this tiny house a tool to facilitate the life that you guys want. This is only the beginning. Let's go show Monkey a new house. Here we go. Welcome home. Oh, oh nice. My oh, goodness. nice. Look, oh, oh, this looks oh awesome. Look at this. Look at our that. Couch. So excited the couch fits in there. Oh, so look at our table. They fit the whole table look in there. Look at these stools. Wow, that looks really pretty. Got to see the bathroom. Oh, oh my god, that the is bathroom? so oh, perfect. Oh, nice. It does work. 
Wow. Oh, man, these lights are so cool. Awesome. This is awesome. Look this at looks it. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> this is wicked nice. All right, there's out. still so much Kitchen. to see. Check out our project. This monkey's little scratchers. Let me show Wood you, looks baby. Awesome. He loves it. Look loves how it. happy Good he little is. perch. I love the sink. This is awesome. This is really it's nice. Huge. It's huge. Look at the little stove. Butcher block looks awesome. I wasn't expecting that, but it looks it does awesome. Look good. All right, I see my closet. We must continue. Oh, no way. Oh, my God. Oh, my there goodness. Look at this. Think you're going to fit all your clothes in here? Yeah, yeah. Look how many shelves there are. The storage look here. Look at this bed. I like how it's high up. Oh, yeah, the ceiling fan. Oh, nice. Oh, look at the lights. Oh, yeah. Those are wicked nice. I love wow. it. It's perfect. This does feel like our bed. This is amazing. This is awesome. The Everything wood is so pretty. Goes together so well with this room. Where do we go next? I want to see the loft. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Wait until you see this. I'm coming up. Oh my gosh, wow. Wait until you see this. Oh, nice. It is so perfect. Oh, this is perfect. Look at this. This is Look awesome this. up here. I this love it up here. Perfect. This is awesome. This is my favorite room. We have an observatory in our tiny home. This is like a legitimate observatory. I don't know how this fit in the budget. This is crazy because I was hoping for a skylight. And this, this is, is so much more. That looks <laughs> perfect. Now we can stargaze all year long. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hey. hey. This is like legitimately a tiny house we walk into, and we have to like look around. Like, are they up there? Where are they? <laughs> Get in here. Get in here. Oh, monkey. This is amazing. Yes. Do you guys like, like it? It's uh, love awesome. It. Have you already thought about how you're going to rearrange your furniture? <laughs> yeah, I did start talking about <laughs> it. I, I, I saw her looking. Not drastically, though. Actually, I love how it's set up. Come this way. We shall. Uh -huh. Let's do it. We're going upstairs. Nice. We're going upstairs. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's really nice up there, isn't it? Oh, yeah. It's awesome. I love like, it this there. is my favorite room. What do you think? It's really an observatory. I don't even know how you guys did it. Well, to cut into the roof, to make the reinforcements, to put in a skylight, might as well go the next step and make it something really unique and something that you guys are really going to use and appreciate. Yes. We'll use it all the time. Every night. It's. Perfect. Money well spent. What I really like about it is what it does during the daytime. Yeah. You're catching light in the morning, in mm -hmm. the afternoon, and it just brings it all the way down, reflects off the walls, yeah. and brightens the entire space. Might even be able to get a tan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we really hit the jackpot. We can literally lay under the stars all year round, and that's so exciting to us. Wish granted. Bedroom, pretty nice. Pretty Better nice than is nice. an understatement. Oh, yeah, seriously. It's beautiful. What was the first thing you said when you walked into this bedroom? Where's my you? closet? Where's your closet, right? Really, what we were trying to do was use this wall, right? And so you can see there's plenty of room. There's shoe storage down below. And then if you notice. Oh, nice. Oh, oh my perfect. Goodness. That is perfect. <laughs> That's yeah. a lot of storage. In it's beautiful. Like, Exactly what I wanted. Wow, I'm really glad to hear Thank that. Thank you so much. You know, there is actually another part to this. And I know that utilizing the space under the bed is obvious. And we do it a lot of different ways, but oh, this what? one I really like. Oh, what? Oh, my that goodness. Is awesome. <laughs> you can access your gear. And also, when you want to get into this one, it's crazy. Stop this it. lifts up. Check it out. So we have a table and storage. Yeah, that's insane. Stop it. And then a nice little stool comes out. Yeah, you got a little desk in here as that, well. That's that is awesome. incredible. That's crazy. Thumbs up for the bedroom? Thumbs, double thumbs up. You've been through the house on your own. You've been through the house with us. Does this feel like a place that can be a home? Does it feel like what you guys had envisioned when you first embarked on this tiny house journey? It feels like our home, and it's better than we envisioned. Exactly our tiny dream. Seriously, this is the perfect tiny house. It's our tiny house. It has our thumbprint right on it. There was a lot that has gone into this. I mean, you guys were all in on this to really make your life about what you wanted it to be about. And that was experiences and not things. So I hope this is a tool that you can use to accomplish those goals. For sure. We hit the jackpot. It's awesome. Everything I could have pictured. Some of those late asks. 
And I'm, I'm talking about you, Observatory. <laughs> what Zach and the team were able to do to not only pull that off, but to make it work within the budget, I think, was really special. I had a really fun time doing it, because it was kind of like an exercise in just good use of the material, trying to pull budget away from the materials, but not sacrifice any of the luxury that you're hoping for your home. Yeah, I don't feel like we sacrificed anything. Knowing what you wanted out of this, from the observatory to the canoe hoist, to bedroom storage. I feel really good about how we pulled it off. You guys seem pretty happy with it. We feel great. This is a new chapter for us. Absolutely, and hopefully it's gonna be a long, fruitful chapter. So <laughs> the only thing left to do at this point <laughs> oh, is yes. to officially welcome you guys with the canoe hoist <laughs> remote control yes. to the tiny house community. Yes. Congratulations, you guys! With the tiny house, there's just so many opportunities that are open to us now. Not only do we have the ability to go canoeing, kayaking, look at the stars whenever we want, but, you know, we're gonna be able to have that financial freedom. I just feel like the possibilities are endless. See you later. See you guys. Enjoy everything. Come on back sometime. <laughs> yeah. See you guys. It's been two months since Sam, Ken, and their cat monkey aimed for the stars and made the move into their new tiny home. How they navigated the rapids of tiny living has it been mostly clear skies as they've adjusted to a decluttered lifestyle. We're headed to Worcester, Massachusetts to find out. The best part about living in our tiny house is how awesome it is. The neighbors are always creeping on us, solid following for our tiny house so far. I'd like to think we're the talk of town. I don't really think that there's anything that I really regret having to leave behind. We have our big comfy couch, we have Monkey. Oh, who's the hungriest? Monkey loves living in the tiny house. He loves the loft. Monkey loves the dome even more than we do. Some of the changes that we made, a major one was the curio cabinet. We got rid of that and we installed a uh, washer dryer. <sighs> but we didn't really have anywhere to hang clothes, so you know, jackets and a lot of work clothes. We just added a hanger section up in the loft and it's been working out perfectly. To me, the toughest spot for sharing such a small space is brushing teeth. I'm an elbower. I throw all my elbows when I brush my teeth. He could always also wait until it's his turn to brush his teeth and then he wouldn't have that problem. I'd recommend a tiny house to anybody. At first it might be a struggle and it might be a lot to be with someone so much. Not that that's the case with myself, but it is awesome. I just love yeah. smothering Ken and Monkey, and now it's even easier. Sharing is caring. Yep, the smaller, the better. 